So listen, like, yeah, this film is not that great. Where's Craven Swamp thing? This is it sped up, possibly as it would be most enjoyable. Everything around the film is quite good, and then you've got the monster suit itself just running around causing havoc. The monster fight at the end's kind of cool, but mostly for a novelty. I'm not the biggest Wes Craven fan in this world. This film doesn't change my mind on that particularly. It would be interesting to realise a really good Swamp Thing film. And, you see, even before Alan Moore, which is where this film is released at that period, there's sophistication and a certain grace to the Swamp Thing comic books when he was created and first written by writer Len Wein. Well, you may not know much about Swamp Thing, so I'm going to use this video as an opportunity to, to educate you all, anyone who isn't familiar, with Swamp Thing. Wikipedia is going to be assisting me here. The Swamp Thing is a superhero sorts in american comic books published by dc comics a humanoid slash plant elemental creature created by writer len ween and artist bernie wrightson the swamp thing has had several humanoid or monster incarnations in various different storylines the character first appeared in house of secrets number 92 july 1971 in a standalone horror story set in the early 20th century the character then returned in a solo series set in the contemporary world and in the general dc continuity the character is a swamp monster that resembles an anthropomorphic mound of vegetable matter and provides to protect his swamp home, the environment in general, and humanity from various supernatural or terrorist threats, his arch nemesis being the sorcerer Antoine Arcane. The character found perhaps its greatest popularity during the original 1970s wine slash Wrightson run and in the mid late 1980s during a highly acclaimed run under Alan Moore, Stephen Bissett, and John Toddleben. Swamp Thing would also go on to become one of the staples of the Justice League Dark team of magical superheroes. The character has been adapted into from the comics into several forms of media, including feature films, television series, and video games. The character made its live-action debut in the film Swamp Thing 1982, with Dick Durock playing the Swamp Thing, while Ray Wise played Alec Holland. Durock played both Swamp Thing and Holland in the sequel film The Return of Swamp Thing 1989, Duroc reprised a role again in the television series Swamp Thing 1990. The Swamp Thing was played by Derek Mears, with Andy Bean playing Alec Holland in the television series Swamp Thing 2019. Another live-action film adaptation titled Swamp Thing is in development as an installment of the DC Universe DCU media franchise. IGN ranked him 28th in the top 100 comic book heroes list. Len Wein came up with the idea for the character while writing a subway in Queens. He later recalled, I didn't have a title for it, so I kept referring to it as that swamp thing I'm working on, and that's how it got its name. Bernie writes and designed the character's visual image using a rough sketch by Wein as a guideline. Len Wein was the writer for the first 13 issues, before David Michelini and Joe Conway finished up the series. Versioning horror artist Bernie Wrightson drew the first 10 issues of the series, while Nesta Redondo drew a further 13 issues, the last issue being drawn by Fred Carrillo. The original creative team worked closely together. Wrightson recalled that during story conferences, Ween would walk around the office acting out all of the parts. The Swamp Thing fought against evil as he sought the men who murdered his wife and caused his monstrous transformation, as well as searching for a means to transform back into his human form. The Swamp Thing has since fought many villains. Though they only met twice during the first series, the mad scientist Antoine Arcane, with his obsession of gaining immortality, became the Swamp Thing's nemesis, even as the Swamp Thing developed a close bond with Arcane's niece, Abigail Arcane. Arcane was aided by his nightmarish army of unmen and the patchwork man, Elias Arcane's brother, Grigori Arcane, who, after a landmine explosion, was rebuilt as a Frankenstein monster type creature by his brother. Also involved in the conflict was the Swamp Thing's close friend turned enemy Lieutenant Matthew Joseph Cable, a federal agent who originally mistakenly believed the Swamp Thing to be responsible for the deaths of Alec and Linda Holland. As sales figures plummeted towards the end of the series, the writers attempted to revive interest by introducing fantastical creatures, aliens, and even Alec Holland's brother Edward, a character that was never referred to again by later writers, into the picture. The last two issues saw the Swamp Thing transformed back into Alec Holland and having to fight one last menace as an ordinary human. The series was cancelled if issue 24, and a blurb for a 25th issue containing an upcoming encounter with Hawkman led nowhere. 
Alec Holland's transformation back into the Swamp Thing was covered in Challenges of the Unknown, number 81 to 87, within which the Swamp Thing is enlisted, enlisted by the titular team to fight the Lovecraftian cosmic threat Magnagala, whom the Swamp Thing had encountered during Ween's run. In 1982, DC Comics revived the Swamp Thing series, attempting to capitalize on the summer 1982 release of the Wes Craven film of the same name. A revival had been planned for 1978, but was a victim of the DC implosion. The new series, called The Saga of the Swamp Thing, featured an adaptation of the Craven film in its first annual. Now written by Martin Pascoe, the book loosely picked up after the Swamp Thing's guest appearances in Challenges of the Unknown, 81-87, DC Comics Presents number 8, and The Brave and the Bold number 172, with the character wandering around the swamps of Louisiana seen as an urban legend and feared by locals. Pascoe's main arc depicted the Swamp Thing roaming the globe, trying to stop a young girl, and the possible Antichrist, named Karen Clancy, from destroying the world. When Pascoe had to give up work on the title due to increasing television commitments, editor Len Wein assigned the title to British writer Alan Moore. When Karen Berger took over as editor, she gave Moore free reign to revamp the title and the character as he saw fit. Moore reconfigured the Swamp Thing's origin to make him a true monster, as opposed to a human transformed into a monster. In his first issue, he swept aside most of the supporting cast that Pascoe had introduced in his year-and-a-half run as writer, and brought the Sunderland Corporation to the forefront as they hunted the Swamp Thing down and killed him in a hail of bullets. The subsequent investigation revealed that the Swamp Thing was not Alec Holland transformed into a plant, but actually a wholly plant-based entity created upon the death of Alec Holland, having somehow absorbed duplicates of Holland's consciousness and memories into himself. He is described as a plant that thought it was Alec Holland, a plant that was trying its level best to be Alec Holland. This is explained as a result of the plant matter of the swamp absorbing Holland's bio-restorative formula, with the swamp thing's appearance being the plant's attempt to duplicate Holland's human form. This revelation resulted in the swamp thing suffering a temporary mental breakdown and identity crisis, but he eventually reasserted himself in time to stop the latest scheme of the Floronic Man. Issue number 32 is a strange twist of comedy and tragedy, as the Swamp Thing encounters an alien version of Pogo, Walt Kelly's character. Moore would later reveal, in an attempt to connect the original one-off Swamp Thing story from House of Secrets number 92 to the main Swamp Thing canon, that there had been dozens, perhaps hundreds, of Swamp Things since the dawn of humanity, and that all versions of the character were designated defenders of the Parliament of Trees an elemental community which rules a dimension known as the Green that connects all plant life on Earth. Moore's Swamp Thing broadened the scope of the series to include ecological and spiritual concerns while retaining its horror fantasy roots. In issue 37, Moore formally introduced the character of John Constantine the Hellblazer as a magician slash con artist who would lead the Swamp Thing on the American Gothic storyline. Alan Moore also introduced the concept of the DC characters Cain and Abel being the mystical reincarnations of the biblical Cain and Abel, in an endless cycle of murder and resurrection. The Saga of the Swamp Thing was the first mainstream comic book series to completely abandon the Comics Code Authority's approval. With issue number 65, regular penciler Rick Veitch took over for more and began scripting the series, continuing the story in a roughly similar vein for 24 more issues. Veitch's term ended in 1989 due to a widely publicised creative dispute when DC refused to publish issue 88 because of the use of Jesus Christ as a character, despite having previously appeared, proved the script in which the Swamp Thing is a cupbearer who offers Jesus water when he calls for it from the cross. The series was handed to Doug Wheeler, made the cup that the Shining Knight believed to be the Holy Grail to be a cup used in a religious ceremony by a Neanderthal tribe that was about to be wiped out by Cro-Magnons in the published version of issue 88. Beginning in issue 90, Wheeler introduced Matango, a character that Stephen Bissett had introduced in Swamp Thing Annual No. 4. After a period of high creative turnover, in 1991, DC sought to revive interest in Swamp Thing by bringing on horror writer Nancy A. Collins on board to write the series. Starting with Swamp Thing Annual No. 6, Collins moved on to write Swamp Thing Volume 2, number 110 to 138, dramatically overhauling the series by restoring the pre-Alan Moore tone and incorporating a new set of supporting cast members into the book. Collins resurrected Anton Arcane, along with the Sunderland Corporation, as foils for, foils for the Swamp Thing. Her stories tended to be ecologically based and at one point featured giant killer flowers. With issue number 140, March 1994, the title was handed over to Grant Morrison for a four-issue story arc, co-written by the then-unknown Mark Millar. 
As Collins had destroyed the status quo of the series, Morrison sought to shake the book up with a four-part storyline which had the Swamp Thing plunged into a nightmarish dream world scenario where he was split into two separate beings, Alec Holland and the Swamp Thing, which is now a mindless being of pure destruction. Miller then took over from Morrison with issue number 144 and launched what was initially conceived as an ambitious 25-part storyline where the Swamp Thing would be forced to go upon a series of trials against rival elemental forces. Millar brought the series to a close with issue 171, in a finale where the Swamp Thing becomes the master of all elemental forces, including the planet. Written by Brian K. Vaughan and drawn by Roger Peterson and Giuseppe Camoncoli in 2001, the third Swamp Thing series focused on the daughter of the Swamp Thing, Tefa Holland. Even though she was chronologically 11 and 12, the series had teeth aged into the body of an 18-year-old with a mind wipe orchestrated by the Swamp Thing. Constantine and Abby to try to control her darker impulses, brought about by her exposure to the Parliament of Trees. Due to the circumstances under which she was conceived, the Swamp Thing, possessing John Constantine, was not aware that he was given a blood transfusion by a demon. She held power over both plants and flesh. Believing herself to be a normal human girl named Mary, who had miraculously recovered from cancer three years prior, she rediscovers her powers and identity when she finds her boyfriend and best friend betraying her on prom night. In a moment of anger, her powers manifest and she kills them both. Tiff then fakes her own death and embarks on a series of misadventures that take her across the country and ultimately to Africa in search of a mythical tree of knowledge. During this series, it seems that the Swamp Thing and Abigail have reunited as lovers and are living in their old home in the Louisiana swamps outside Huma. The home in which they live more closely resembles the one that the Swamp Thing constructs for Abigail during the Moor Run than the home in which they dwell during the Collins Run. In a confrontation with Teeth, the Swamp Thing explains that he has cut himself off from the green and there seems to be no trace of the godlike powers he acquired from the Parliament of Air, Waves, Stones or Flames during the Millar Run. Also, Vaughan's Swamp Thing does not seem to have been divorced from the humanity of his Alec Holland self. The disconnection between these two entities becomes a plot point in Volume 4. A fourth series began in 2004 with writers Andy Diggle, 1-6, Will Pfeiffer, 7-8, and Joshua Dysart, 9-29. In this latest series, the Swamp Thing is averted to his plant-based Earth elemental status after the first storyline, and he attempts to live an eventless life in the Louisiana swamps. Tafe, likewise, is rendered powerless and mortal. Issue 29 was intended to be the final issue of the fourth volume, which was cancelled due to low sales numbers. The conclusion of the crossover event Brightest Day revealed that the Swamp Thing had become corrupted by the personality of the villain Necron in the wake of the Blackest Night crossover event. The Swamp Thing now believed himself to be Necron, similar to how he had once believed himself to be Alec Holland. The Swamp Thing went on a rampage in Star City, ultimately seeking to destroy all life on Earth. The entity within the White Lantern used several heroes, including Hawkman, Hawkgirl, Firestorm, the Martian Manhunter, Aquaman, and Deadman, to slow the rampage and to construct a new Swamp Thing based on the body of Alec Holland. Instead of merely thinking that it was Holland, this version of the Swamp Thing would actually be him. The new Swamp Thing defeated and killed the corrupted and original Swamp Thing. The Swamp Thing then restored life to natural areas around the world and declared that those who hurt the green would fe face his wrath. He also restored Aquaman, Firestorm, Hawkman and the Martian Manhunter to normal. The book ended with the Swamp Thing killing several businessmen who engaged in deliberate illegal polluting activities. This free issue miniseries follows immediately after the events of Brightest Day and follows the actions of John Constantine as he tries to work out what has changed with the Swamp Thing and track him down with the assistance of Zatanna, the Batman, and Superman. DC Comics relaunched Swamp Thing of issue number 1 in September 2011 as part of the New 52 with writer Scott Snyder, 1-18 and annual. Snyder's run concluded with Rotworld, a crossover event between Swamp Thing, Animal Man, and Frankenstein, agent of S-H-A-D-E. Charles Sewell wrote issues 19 to 40. A six-issue miniseries written by Len Wein, co-creator of The Swamp Thing, with art by Kelly Jones, was released between March and August 2016. It follows Swamp Thing giving up his powers to Anton Arcane, who is disguised as Matt Cable. This is followed by a critically acclaimed Tom King Winter special in 2018, also featuring Len Wein's last Swamp Thing issue. A 16-issue miniseries retitled with a V at the beginning, written by Ram V with art by Mike Perkins, began publication in March 2021. The book focuses on a new character named Levi Kami taking up the Swamp Thing mantle while the second Swamp Thing, Alec Holland, is off-world. 
Originally planned as a 10 issue miniseries, The Swamp Thing has been extended to 16 issues, with The Swamp Thing number 10 followed by a short hiatus before returning in March 2022. There we go, I wonder how that's still going. In any case, we'll close it here. Thanks again everyone if you have listened. That's The Swamp Thing and here's the film very sped up. Closing now. Thanks again.